Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart. Today we're talking some handicapping 101, and I am joined by Sports Memo handicapper Eric Polly at Slime Action. If you guys want to give him a follow on Twitter, Eric. First up, what is the same game parlay? Yeah, so same game parlays are quickly becoming the most popular way for novices to get into sports betting. A same game parlay is a parlay that combines multiple bets from the same game. So this could be a combination of a money line, a side, a total, a player prop, or even a game prop combined into one singular bet that focuses on a singular event. Most importantly, let's talk about the math. I say that all the time on Twitter. We know correlated parlays used to be a no-no back in my day in Vegas, but they are quickly becoming really popular. Can you explain to everyone why you should be betting correlated parlays versus regular ones? Yeah, so when it comes to a same game parlay, and just like anything when it comes from a sports book trying to sell you something, if you open any of your sports book apps right now, you'll probably notice that they're kind of pushing these things into your face. And that's because sometimes, or more often than not, betting correlated same game parlays are not the best way to go about it. So if you look at a traditional parlay, the way that the odds of that parlay are calculated are determined by the odds of the straight bets that are inside of that parlay. When you're concocting a same game parlay that focuses on a singular event, and for example, if you're looking at a football game and say you expect the Dallas Cowboys to win, you take them minus two and a half on the first half spread, minus seven on the full game spread, CD Lamp to score a touchdown, and Tony Pollard to have 50 plus receiving yards, you're going to realize that the odds of that bet are probably lower than they would be if you were just taking bets with those same odds that had nothing to do with the same game. That is because these are correlated bets. So, of course, if CeeDee Lamb has a touchdown and Tony Pollard has a great game in the rushing or receiving game, the Cowboys have a much better chance of covering both the first half and full game spread and winning the game. So, it is not an illusion if you're ever looking at a same game parlay that you concoct on any of these sportsbook apps and noticing, wait, this payout seems to be a little low. The answer is, because it's correlated, it is low. The sportsbook is actually making you pay a tax for the correlation on same game parlays. Ooh, a tax, if you will. But gosh, they're just so juicy and they're so much fun. I, I always appreciate when people can hit those because they are tough to do. But most importantly, let's talk about some do's and don'ts. What do you recommend same gay parlay users or betters, I shouldn't say, do or don't do? So going back to the correlation, one of the things that people like to do when it comes to same game parlays, and it is a viable strategy to an extent, is focusing in on a matchup where you believe to pick edge. Again, using the example, say the commanders are playing the Cowboys in this scenario, and you really know these two teams very well, and you think you have a great understanding of how these two teams play against each other, of course you're going to want to target this game for a same game parlay because you think you have an edge on this game. Well, it's very difficult to get just the money line or spread correct in an NFL game let alone piling in a money line, a spread, a first half, as well as some player props. So first things first, as far as don'ts go, is for starters, try not to use correlated parlays. And two is you have to understand what you're doing. So if you're betting again on CD Lamb over receiving yards, Tony Pollard over receiving yards, any other Cowboy just going over, over, overs, that's a very tough thing to do because say the Cowboys average 400 yards of offense and you're predicting overs on four different Cowboys, you're trying to predict the entire Cowboys offensive output for that game, which of course is very difficult. Don't just pile on the overs. You got to be able to look at some spots for the unders. Eric, you make a pretty convincing argument uh, to not bet same game parlays, but we know that a lot of our audience is still going to do it. Can you give us some of the do, some of the things you recommend those bettors do when betting same game parlay? Yeah, so one of the most important things you should do when betting a same game parlay is look to bet some unders. If you're trying to just bet overs on every single player prop or game prop that is going on in your same game parlay, that is already making a difficult task of beating an NFL side or total much more difficult by incorporating overs on player props because in turn, you're just simply trying to predict exactly how for example, the Cowboys game script is going to go, which in reality is a very, very difficult thing to do. Is you should definitely be sprinkling in some unders as well as some other things like, for example, you should not be focusing in on the results, but maybe you should focus on target shares. Like for example, if CD Land is not playing in that game, you should try to target who is going to be looking at his receptions because this person is not playing. Or even better, you should say, 
this person people believe will have a bigger target share because this other person is not playing. Look to bet some unders. Do not bet only overs. Zig, when you should zag. I love it as a contrarian myself. Thank you to Eric Polly of SportsMemo.com. Make sure you guys head over to the Wager Talk YouTube channel and check out all of our other Handicapping 101 videos.